Hello guys, this is Revolution. On this video, we are going to be discussing whether or not Dragon Ball characters can travel at the speed of light. I know, I know, this is an old topic and the answer really is quite obvious. However, thanks to that one sentence in Dragon Ball Super Episode 104, where we saw Universe 11's Dispo fight against the legendary assassin Hit of Universe 6, every Dragon Ball down player and their mum has literally said, well, Dispo is the only person to reach light speed in the Dragon Ball Super series. Despite a wealth of evidence, dating even back to the early stages of Dragon Ball Z, that these characters had far surpassed light speed. Despite the fact that when we got to see Dispo fight again against Golden Freezer, we had statements in that very episode, episode 124 of Dragon Ball Super, that put Dispo way above light speed. Now, there's some people out there who won't take narrative or author's intent into context. What they frustratingly forget about is that what we are talking about is fiction. And even though we can apply some physics to the fiction, not all of them do fit. What these people demand and will only accept are cold hard feats for a basis of power scaling. So in this video I'll provide a feat that without a shadow of doubt proves that in this particular moment Goku is faster than the speed of light. Just before we delve further into this discussion, if you're new to this channel make sure you subscribe therefore you'll be notified whenever I release new content, power scaling, theories, historical videos on Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. I'll also be covering Saint Seiya soon, as well as Baruto. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. Please do keep hitting that like button. It's like I keep saying, lending me your energy for my massive Genki Dharma that will be soon heading straight for the Dragon Ball Down players. Hit that like button and also follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want to talk further about Dragon Ball. So as I mentioned earlier, the catalyst for this speed downplay of Dragon Ball characters has quite frankly come from that episode 104 Dispo between Legendary Assassin Hit Fight where it was stated that Dispo through repeated battles had become faster than the speed of sound and the speed of light. But that statement is literally on your screen right now. Seriously let's just read through it together. Through repeated battles he's surpassed the speed of sound and light. Surpassed means he's already done it. It's past tense. Now, the use of surpassing the speed of sound in this sentence is quite frankly redundant. <laughs> the speed of sound is approximately 340 meters per second. The speed of light is around 300 million meters per second. They are not even remotely close to each other, but it also says he surpassed the speed of light. That doesn't mean he is the speed of light. He's surpassed the speed of light. That means he's faster than the speed of light. Admittedly, that sentence is vague. That could mean 1.2 times the speed of light, 2 times the speed of light, 10 times the speed of light, 100 million times the speed of light, 4 quadrillion times the speed of light. It's vague. But one thing is clear. Through repeated battles, past tense, he surpassed the speed of light. Obviously, a lot of his power scalers have been saying they are far surpassed the speed of light. And quite frankly, the context of this sentence agrees with that. Some people will take it out of context, while people have taken it out of context. And I do accept that it is a stupid statement to make at this point in the game. We've known for a while now that these characters have far surpassed the speed of light. This was clearly an attempt by the writing team to put emphasis on the fact that Dispo is a speedster. That was simply their intent. I don't think it was supposed to be taken hyperliteral, even though the context agrees with the fact that Dispo is far surpassed the speed of light. Anyway, this argument has lingered, this downplay has lingered even till today despite episode 124 where Dispo took on Frieza. Final form Frieza was stated to be able to keep up with Dispo. Dispo here was using the same speed that enforced the Grand Priest to give Zeno a god pad basically to basically watch this fight because he couldn't keep up with it. The same being that destroyed a multiverse in the future timeline within an instant. And basically, even if you don't believe he destroyed the entire timeline, it was stated by Beerus in episode 41 and Whis in episode 47 that Zeno could, like I said, wipe the multiverse out in an instant. And we've seen in the Tournament of Power, he doesn't even have to be in the universe to destroy it, which makes his attack massively, massively, massively faster than the speed of light itself. While some may argue that Zeno's attack is instant, Zeno in the future timeline 
had to use two light orbs to destroy that multiverse. And obviously in the Tournament of Power, when we've seen him use a raise, we've actually seen a very similar effect to what we saw in the Battle of God Saga, where it seems to create a shockwave effect that collapses the universe into a void. Obviously, I'm going a little out of context here because Zeno is a completely different entity compared to the likes of Goku and the gang and even Dispo. But he couldn't see Dispo's movements. That's most likely because he himself isn't a fighter and he doesn't recognize the fighting and movement patterns of Dispo and Freezer. But Freezer then goes golden and it's stated that Freezer has surpassed this Dispo who was traveling faster than what he was against Hit. Dispo also stated that he can increase his speed thousands of times in an instant. I mean, that hit itself would make him thousands of times faster than light. But Freezer has surpassed this version of Dispo, which ultimately forced Dispo to use his desperation move and go to super maximum light speed mode. Now that name is crazy cheesy, I know, but what does maximum light speed mode mean? Well, what would minimum light speed mode mean? It would mean light speed. So what would maximum light speed mode? Well, it would mean immeasurable light speed because it is no longer quantifiable. However, I have heard there's a different translation to the one that Crunchyroll used. The other translation is that this is Dispo's fastest mode. What is the context of a fastest mode? Well, it means he's the fastest, there's nothing faster. But as often is the case in Dragon Ball, there's a lot of statements and claims where it isn't backed up by a quantifiable feat. And some people simply won't accept author's intent in these cases and they want a quantifiable feat. Now, this isn't involved in this situation, this is involving another situation which Goku was involved in in episode 118 when he was stuck in the black hole. So once again this feat wasn't actually that impressive compared to what we would expect Goku and the gang to be able to do at full power but in this scene in particular Goku was nowhere near full power. He also had Android 17 and 18 with him and despite the fact it was clearly pushing them down none of them actually look that anguished or like they were in sufficient pain. Even in Bulma's gravity chamber, when characters can't handle the gravity, they are flat on the floor, they can't move. There was no screaming going on or anything of that kind. Anyway, Goku even managed to stand up and these guys are in the middle of this black hole. Now, a defining feature of a black hole is the event horizon. Basically, when anything passes beyond the event horizon, it literally gets sucked into the black hole. Even light cannot escape. The gravitational pull is so strong, even light speed is helpless against it. Nothing can escape. And if you don't want to take my word for it, here is an excerpt from Dr. Stephen Hawking's website on black holes. Let me just read this to you. A black hole has a boundary called the event horizon. It is where gravity is just strong enough to drag back light and prevent it escaping. Because nothing can travel faster than light, everything else gets dragged back also, falling through the event horizon. It's a bit like going over Niagara Falls in a canoe. If you are above the falls, you can get away with it if you paddle fast enough. But once you're over the edge, you are lost. There's no way back. It is the same with black holes. If you fall towards a black hole feet first, gravity will pull harder on your feet than your head because they are nearer the black hole. The result is you will be stretched out longwise and squashed in sideways. If a black hole has the mass of a few times of our sun, you would be torn apart and made into spaghetti, which is otherwise known as spaghettification. Now guys, Goku, Android 17 and Android 18 aren't in the event horizon. We don't see that here. They are actually in the black hole. They are far deeper than the event horizon. If you yourself, your body was found in the event horizon, the gravitational forces would literally stretch and rip apart your body. This process is called spaghettification. If you look at Goku, Android 17 and Android 18 and once again they are much further than the event horizon. They aren't being stretched, their bodies are resisting these gravitational forces. Anyway that's besides the point, light, regular light speed cannot escape a black hole. In fact even the three dweebs who actually put together this pretty black hole and yes unfortunately this technique is called that, they even claim that even light cannot escape from it. It says it on your screen right now. Basically, light cannot escape, yet what we see Goku do is stand up in the middle of this black hole, no spaghettification is occurring, and he shoots a Kamehameha, in fairness, in Super Saiyan Blue, 
and we see it as it's traveling out of this black hole. It is being distorted. That's because it's being theorized that inside black holes, there are curvatures. But Goku's Kamehameha is traveling at such velocity, it's resisting these curvatures and the pull of gravity. But eventually the Kamehameha makes its way out of the black hole. Therefore, it must be traveling faster than the speed of light. And we know that if you can shoot a key blast at that speed, you can also propel your body using the same key at that speed. The Kamehameha not only travels fast enough to go through the black hole and go past what would surely be the event horizon, but eventually on to hit the three competitors that is actually holding this black hole together and knocks them off the stage and destroys the black hole in the process. Obviously, this is a fictional black hole. We can apply physics to it where we can, but ultimately it isn't going to act like an exact black hole in real life. That's an appeal to reality fallacy, but there's no doubt that this is a black hole. Anyway, this is basically the solid feat. Goku's Kamehameha would have to be considerably faster than the speed of light to escape a black hole, never mind make it past the event horizon and eventually knock out a relatively strong opponents. Goku wasn't even at full power either, he was still weakened after his fight with Jiren in the Dragon Ball Super Specials. Dragon Ball characters are faster than the speed of light. There's just no way to argue this now. I don't know why this keeps coming up. There's so many feats throughout Dragon Ball that proves this. In fact, I made a video a few months ago why Goku is far faster than comic fans think. I'll link it at the end of this video so you can check it out. That has a list of feats from Goku that pit him faster than light. However, I just wanted to put this black hole feat there. It wasn't a majorly impressive feat, but it still is quantifiable and it would have to be faster than light to escape the black hole. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If there are any other low balls in Dragon Ball, let me know in the comment section. I'll see if I can cover them. Make sure you smash that like button and lend me your energy. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Until next time, Ad Astra.